Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're just going to go over the method of superposition for solving slope and deflection problems for statically determinate structures that are loaded with more than one load. For example, in this case, we have a simply supported beam with a distributed load and a point load. We're actually going to work through these examples. This will be the next video. This will be the video after it, and this will be the video after that. Um, but in this video, I just want to talk about how to go about doing this. So when we're thinking about the slope and deflection, or basically just like the actual deformed shape of one of these structures, uh, the method of superposition tells us that that actual shape is equal to the sum of the uh, this beam when we only apply one load at a time. So for example, this load plus this load. So basically the distributed load here would cause some displacement and this applied point load on its own would also cause some displacement like this. And then each point would have like its own slope. And basically if you add those together, if you add the displacement at any point or if you add the slopes at any point, that's what we're getting for the actual slope and displacement of the structure with both loads. So the same would be uh, true for this one. If we take the actual slope and deflection of the system, then we can find it by adding up the slope and deflection caused by the distributed load and the slope and deflection caused by just when there's a point load. And then in this example too, actually the example that I've got for you guys, I didn't realize I've got this switched here. Uh, the one that we're going to work through actually has a moment like this. So the deflection of this double kind of loaded structure is going to end up looking like something like this and that is uh, that can be exactly calculated by the sum of the deflection caused by the point load and the deflection caused by the applied moment. So basically these just become uh, like solving a series of easier problems uh, where basically we're just solving uh, statically determinate beam problems with only a single applied load. Now we're not just focus in on this this part of the first problem here if you guys have been watching my other videos, you may have seen me solve this problem. Uh, so this was actually the YouTube video that I did solving that exact problem where we have a point load one quarter of the way along the span. Um, it's called Find Deflection and Slope of a Simply Supported Beam with a Point Load, and it's almost 10 minutes long. Um, if you're curious, you can find the URL right there, um, uh, or you can just search this by name. Um, but this was like a 10 minute long video, and as we went through, we actually, we, we do what's called the, uh, what's referred to as the double integration method. So we did, uh, we found everything in terms of x, we integrated it twice, um, and then we did a whole bunch of more integration stuff. And if you watch this video, this might seem familiar to you, um, but I'm just going to skip through it. So just to give you an idea of how much math was involved in this. Um, it was a it was about a 10 minute video to watch, but most of it was actually fast forward. It took me probably like an hour to work through this. Um, so this is actually no easy problem. So if we get down, um, basically, I think the end is somewhere down here. Um, we did a whole bunch of scary math. This is like no one wants to actually do this stuff, and we ended up. Uh, this was. Uh, these values here, this y was our displacement at that point load, and these thetas here was our angle at that point load. So crazy amounts of math just to get to there. So what I'm going to suggest that you do instead, and how we're going to work through these next three problems uh, using the method of superposition, is we're going to use a table. And I got that for you guys right here. Um, so you can find this table on the website engineerforfree.com slash all this stuff. That's the URL exactly if you want to type it in. Um, they're probably, I'm going to put a, a link to this in the description and uh, maybe even put a little pop-up thing right here so you can click on that. Um, but basically this table here gives us um, for various simply supported beams. You guys can pause and read this if you want. I'm not going to read it out to you right now, um, but there's some good stuff in there. So basically we have for uh, various simply supported or so various statically determinate beams um, with uh, a one type of loading, so like distributed load the whole way across or point load, uh, or even there's a one down here for the moment. Um, we've got a table here that's gonna give us the slope at A, the slope at B, and the elastic curve equation. There's obviously more stuff that you could put in one of these tables. You could put the, the max deflection or this midpoint slope or whatever. Um, but this is going to be good enough for the, the next couple videos that we're doing. So if we look at the one with the point load that's not centered in the middle, this is the exact same example that we did in uh, in this video here that took us like one hour to work through. Um, but here, this is going to give us the deflection right at that point. So that's basically what we're just going to plug in and use. 
And uh, this is a totally valid method uh, and way of solving problems. You can find tables just like this uh, in the, the front or back cover of any mechanics of materials or structural analysis textbook. Or again, you can just come get this one here from that URL on the website. Now, I do caution you guys to be super careful uh, when you are using these that you're putting in everything uh, correctly. For example, when you get out uh, when you get out values from this outputs from these tables, if your if your y value is positive, that's indicating a deflection in the upward direction, and if your y value is negative, that's indicating a deflection in the downward direction. And again, for angles here, if you're getting a positive angle, these are in units of radians, and if it's positive, that means it's kind of like clockwise up or counterclockwise up from the axis, and then counterclockwise down from the axis. Uh, would be considered a negative angle. And this positive convention is also based off of um, inputting your values here, your applied load, so whether it's W, P, or, or M here. I forgot to label that with an M, I should probably fix that. Um, but if you have, for example, like a load, like if P here is pointing up actually on the beam, then you got to put P in as a negative, otherwise it's not going to work. So I caution you to be careful when using tables because it is really easy to get like a negative value where you were expecting a positive one or vice versa. You can get switched around depending on how the, the table is set up. So be really cautious with that. And if you're expecting something like if you have a point load pressing down and you're expecting that deflection to be downwards of the beam and you're getting some value that says it's going up, again, just like stop see if you've made a math error or something and then once you're satisfied with your answer then you can then you can proceed so just be really careful when using tables but they do significantly speed it up because i bet you it's going to take us like less than a minute to type this stuff in and solve for y whereas it took us like an hour to uh, to do it with the double integration method so anyways guys uh the method of superposition is just breaking these into uh, into easier problems that we have a table for that we can solve or if you don't if you're not allowed to use a table you there are other methods that you can do for example double integration method but let's hope you don't get that on a test for this type of problem um, and so these next three videos that we're going to do where we solve these problems these are statically determinate problems you can use the method of superposition for statically indeterminate problems um, but when we get to that later in the course, we're going to be calling that the force method. So don't worry about that for now. If you're looking for statically indeterminate problems, then go check that section and see if it's up. But otherwise, uh, thanks for watching, guys. And I will see you in the next video where we're going to go and solve uh, for this example here on the left with some actual numbers attached to it.